morning, everyone, and welcome to the third meeting of the Local Government and Communities Committee in 2018. I'm Monica Lennon, the Vice Convener. I'm not Bob Doris, our convener, who has been caught, in, caught up in some uh, travel disruption this morning. And Bob, maybe I'll join us uh, later. We've kept a, a place for him. Can I remind everyone present to turn off their mobile phones or keep them in silence? And as meeting papers are uh, provided in digital format, tablets may be used by members during the meeting. Um, apart from Bob, who may join us, we don't have any other apologies uh, today. Um, can we move to agenda item one and I welcome the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and, and Land Reform, Rosanna Cunningham, and her officials Judith Brown and Robin McLean. Um, the committee will take evidence on an affirmative statutory instrument which provides regulations for allotments under the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015. And just for the record, I'll just say that Robin McLean is a policy officer with Food, Drink and Trade Division and Judith Brown is a solicitor with the Scottish Government. This instrument is laid under the affirmative procedure, which means the Parliament must approve the instrument before the provisions can come into force. Following this evidence session, the committee will be invited at the next agenda item to consider a motion to approve the instrument. Can I invite the Cabinet Secretary to make a short opening statement? Um, Thank you, convener, and uh, it does make a change to be sitting in front of a set of different committee faces to the one I'm normally uh, uh, sitting in front of. Um, uh, uh, this is a fairly technical issue, as I'm, I'm sure all members have realised. Um, this draft order does form part of a package of secondary legislation laid before Parliament to implement Part 9 of the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015, which was the part of the Act which updated and simplified the legislation on allotments. Um, the intention of the draft order is primarily to avoid any potential misunderstanding of Section 115 of the 2015 Act once it comes into force, which it will do on the 1st of April this year. Um, so we're clarifying Parliament's intention in respect of that. The draft order modifies Section 115 to clarify that local authorities must ensure that their first allotment site regulations made under that section cover all allotment sites in the authorities' area. It also makes modifications to Section 116 of the 2015 Act to clarify when a local authority's regulations are made and come into force. And lastly, the draft order will repeal spent provisions of the Land Settlement Facilities Act 1919. So, in a little bit more detail, um, uh, uh, all allotment sites, uh, the, the clarification was needed to ensure that everybody was, that it was unambiguous, that everybody understood that all allotment sites um, would require to be covered uh, uh, when the first regulations were made by each authority. Um, in respect of uh, uh, modifications, the intention is that for certainty and consistency, each authority's first set of regulations is to be in force within two years of commencement of Section 115. And accordingly, Article 23 of the order makes the modifications to Section 116 um, necessary to clarify this. And lastly, the order repeals certain provisions of the Land Settlement Facilities Act 1919 relating to allotments, principally because these provisions are now out of date and no longer required as a consequence of the 2015 Act. That's a very brief overview, uh, convener. Um, obviously, myself or either of the officials would be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. I'll invite members to ask questions. Andy Whiteman. Thank you, convener. Thanks. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Um, you said that it was Parliament's intention that local authorities should make regulations about all the allotment sites. Obviously, I wasn't here, so I'm can you give me some evidence as to that? I mean, are you clear that was Parliament's intention? This is just <coughs> clarifying it? Uh, yes, I think the, 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 the slight concern would be that some may interpret the intention as allotment sites, presumably from this period on, rather than all um, uh, allotment sites. So uh, uh, I, I should say um, that this slight issue was picked up um, at our side and it, this is really to try and ensure there's no ambiguity about that. Um, this, um, you're using powers under Section 143 of the Community Empowerment Act, which allows you to modify any enactment 
of primary legislation, which is what you're doing. You're effectively making new law here. I'm just wondering why no public consultation was carried out. Well, we were in touch with uh, a local authority, uh, uh, with the local authorities on uh, on this. Um, uh, on 1st of November, we wrote to them all, uh, explaining the intention to bring forward <coughs> modification uh, to Part 9 of the Act as part of the implementing legislation, uh, and there were no um, responses at all to that correspondence. So um, there clearly wasn't a, 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 a huge issue um, okay. from people. You've done some consultation. That's, that's uh, well, that's uh, yes, it's not a formal, obviously not a formal consultation, but we were in touch with them to explain what we were intending to do. That's very helpful. Um, moving on to the Land Settlement Facilities Act 1919. One of the provisions that repeals is Section 22 um, of the 1919 Act. I'm just wondering why that's... You said it was spent. I'm just wondering why that provision is spent. It's a power to appropriate land to provide allotments. That seems to me a useful power to still have on the statute book. Uh, by local authorities. Well, I, like, like yourself, I wasn't actually involved in the, <laughs> in the passing of this <laughs> Act, and I certainly wasn't involved in the 1919 legislation, although sometimes it feels like I might be. Um, I don't know whether or not either of the officials can... can respond to that. I, I could Judith, perhaps yeah. help. Uh, the overall approach of the allotments of Part 9 was to repeal all of the existing body of allotments legislation and start afresh with the uh, with Part 9 provisions. Uh, it, it was identified late on the process that this was one that had simply been missed. So for consistency, uh, we, we were repealing this, this as well. Um, it's similar to other provisions, for, in, for instance, in the Land Settlement Scotland Act 1919. And these are provisions that our understanding is are no, are no, longer, uh, are no longer relevant and uh, Part 9 would replace all of the existing um, allotments legislation. So it was really just for consistency and a tidying up exercise on the statute book. Uh, well, for the record, I, I, I recall that by introducing new legislation for allotments in the Community Impairment Act, there was provision was not made to um, retain the, the 1919 powers for local authorities to acquire land by compulsory purchase. That was that was dropped, that seemed to me, in a, something that shouldn't have been done, but that's water under the bridge. So I'm, I'm just nervous about repealing a provision which I have yet to hear the evidence uh, as to why it's being done. I mean, this is a power for a, a borough, urban district, or parish, so the modern local authorities now, obviously, where no power of appropriation is otherwise provided to appropriate for the purpose of allotment any land held by the council or to, or to appropriate for other purposes of the council land acquired by the council for allotments. Effectively means that land that the council owns that might suffer from some restrictions, it may have been bought under another enactment, can be appropriated for use as allotments. That seems to be appropriate. And we, we, we've had problems, not specifically in allotments, but we've had, we've had problems in relation to appropriation of land. As you'll recall, the Portobello School was on common good land, which the the law in 73 said you couldn't appropriate and we had to pass legislation in this place to allow it. So I'm just very nervous about um, passing legislation where I'm not clear why it's being done. You say consistency, that doesn't seem to be sufficient evidence. I suspect what's, uh, the, the approach that's been taken is that we've effectively systematised all of the legislation which relates to allotments. Now, um, uh, in, in those circumstances, I suppose the argument you're making then is that, that in, in that decision something equivalent to this provision could have been made if we were going to repeal previous uh, um, decisions. But I don't understand that that even was a discussion or an argument at the time. Um, I, 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 I suffer from not having been involved in the actual um, progress of the community empower legis empowerment legislation. So uh, uh, I can't speak from personal experience on this. Can Robin, perhaps you, can you remember if there was actually an active discussion at that time? Uh, yes, there was, and uh, it was felt that there was a, a need for more evidence as to local authorities having used that power to acquire land for allotments. Um, and it was felt that until we, we had that analysis, um, we, we weren't going to do anything with, with compulsory purchase. Um, it was uh, an issue that had come up, and um, we, we, we simply need more evidence um, before we can take something forward with perhaps new legislation or putting into a, 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 a bill that's ongoing at the moment? I mean, there, is a, there are other um, uh, 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 provisions, of course, for communities to acquire um, land to, to, to themselves to, and that's all being brought through 
um, from the community empowerment side as well. If I could perhaps also add that there's, there's similar provision in section 73 of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973. I'm afraid I don't have a copy of that with me. Um, but, and also sections, um, there are sections of the bill which provide that there's a protection that ministerial consent is required for change of use of allotment sites and um, an alternative allotment being offered. Um, section 22 didn't have that additional protection. Um, to, it was really in light of those, uh, the existing power in the 1973 Act and the additional protections under the Part 9, that it was felt that that provision was no longer required. Section of the 73 Act, is that? Uh, that is Section 73 of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973. I don't have a copy of that section with me. It was, a, it was a, along similar lines uh, to appropriate land for allotments. What, what you're saying is that Section 73 of the Local Government Act 1973 contains the same provisions or updated provisions of the Section 22 of the 1990 Act. Ensical, but uh, similar provisions about power to appropriate lands, yes. Okay, I'll let others in and I'll have a look at the 73 Act. Any further questions from members? Graeme Simpson. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just, to, just to be clear, when you wrote to councils, were you asking for a response? Um, a letter uh, to councils. It was. Uh, I. I don't have a. I. I can share a draft with with the committee. Um, certainly, it, we would, didn't tell them not to respond to us. Um, I can't remember the exact wording of it, but. Um, as they would certainly yeah. be advised of intention. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, between writing to someone and just telling them what you plan to do and writing to someone and asking them what they think about it, that would be a consultation. The, oh. the former isn't a consultation. So, um, uh, Scottish Government has a very good working relationship with local authorities, so they, they know that they have a direct line to us if they need to ask us any questions or... They're not happy with uh, some of the proposals that are put forward. So, um, as I say, I don't have a draft in front of me, but they're certainly not. Um, if, if, some, if one of the local authorities did have an issue with what was being proposed, we would certainly take that on board. OK. Uh, can I just be clear on the point that Mr Whiteman raised? Um, if we were to approve this today, is the effect of that that councils would not be able to... Uh, appropriate land or change the use of land uh, that they 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 own to allotment sites would that be the effect of it uh, if I can just turn to the appropriate sections so uh, sorry, uh, I beg your pardon is, is the concern that uh, councils would not be able to to get rid of land to change the use of land that's currently allotments I um, think what mr. Sorry. Whiteman was uh, his line of questioning uh, was around the power for councils to change the use of land to allotments, land that they currently own. That's not an allotment, they could change it to an allotment. So my concern is if we, if we pass this, that they won't have that power. And I'm, I'm just seeking clarity. There's no, there's no prohibition here that would prevent them. In fact, they are encouraged. There are duties to, for local authorities to find ways of um, creating more allotments. So that there is nothing in Part 9 that would prevent them from doing that. Andy Thank you, uh, Convener. So the benefits of having Wi-Fi is we can look at Section 73 of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973, uh, which says that subject to the 59 Act, and following provisions a local authority may appropriate for the purpose of any function, whether statutory or otherwise, land vested in them for the purpose of any other such function. So on the basis of that, um, it also includes the land to which Section 2 applies is held for use as allotment. So subject to that, I'm content with that. Um, maybe should have a word of advice on policy notes. It would help if some of the rationale for repeals was given there. I mean, I say that specifically because this is a secondary legislation that is modifying an enactment. I mean, it's modifying statutory provisions. It's not a regulation itself. It's, it's changing the face of an act and repealing uh, other acts. And it, it concerns me that sometimes these things are done for the best of intentions. I have absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. 
but if limited consultation is done or Parliament hasn't really had time to scrutinise it or we find it difficult to understand the rationale, then things can easily slip by. Thank you. Um, thanks to members. I think maybe just a couple of points of clarification, because um, that, was, that was all very interesting. Um, I think the issue around local authorities, I think given we all know that there's a growing interest in allotments and there's certainly demand, then I found it quite surprising to hear that, that local authorities didn't reply at all and, and perhaps maybe that is an issue to revisit the, the way the letter w was framed. Um, I'm not sure if it was Judith Brown, but was there, in one of the answers, was there a point about um, ministerial approval for change of use? Did I, did I pick that up correctly? That, that's the situation where if, if ministers wish to, um, to ch well, sorry, if, if local authorities wish to change uh, allotment sites for other uses that they can't dispose of or change the use of um, those sites unless certain conditions are met, um, and that includes getting Scottish ministers' consent to the disposal or change of use. So it's, a, it's an added protection to keep allotment sites in place. That after the sort of normal statutory planning process in the local authority, is that uh, yes, the notification in addition direction? to that, yeah. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Well, if there's no further questions from members, that takes us on to item two, where the committee will formally consider motion S5M... Oh, sorry, um, forgive me, I should have invited the Cabinet Secretary to sum up and respond to the debate. I, I Apologies. Think, uh, I, I don't think there's uh, a huge amount I need to say. Um, I, I think the point is well made by Andy about um, the Andy Whiteman about um, the clarification around the rationale. Um, uh, um, so I'm sure the officials are listening to that. And I think I can, uh, I can ask the officials to forward a copy of the letter that was sent to local authorities so that you can see for uh, um, for your own um, contentment, that that you know that was um, done in a in a in a in a proper manner. So apart from that, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That's helpful. Well, we can move on to um, agenda item two. Um, our convener hasn't arrived yet to to help me out. So so bear with me. Um, so at this point in the meeting, the committee will formally consider uh, motion S five M nine nine eight nine, calling for the committee to recommend approval of the draft Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015 Supplementary and Consequential Provisions Order 2018. Um, so I invite the Cabinet Secretary to speak to and move the motion. Um, I'm not sure I'm required to speak at this point, given that the conversation that we've already have, but I'm certainly happy to move that the committee supports this draft order and recommend that the draft Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015 Supplementary and Consequential Provisions Order 2018 be approved. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And I invite any contributions from members? And there are none. Um, so at this point, um, the question is that motion S5M 9989 in the name of the Cabinet, Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform be approved. Are we all agreed? We are. The committee will report on the outcome of the instrument shortly. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That's fine. And thank you to our witnesses. We can move on now to agenda item three. And the committee will consider negative instrument 457 as listed on the agenda. This instrument is laid under the negative procedure, which means that its provisions will come into force unless the Parliament votes on a motion to annul it. No motions to annul have been laid, and can I invite members to make any comments on this instrument? Andy Whiteman. Uh, I'll just comment that, you know, this is a negative instrument, and there's been a, a vast amount of consultation on this. Um, I, you know, I do actually have a concern, this is, this is, this is broader, but I think it's appropriate to, to, to raise it, that affirmative instruments where ministers are using their powers to modify an enactment sh should actually be subject to a super affirmative, I, I think. Uh, I think um, this is an increasing power that's seen in a lot of legislation where ministers can modify an enactment. They, they could bring forward an order to repeal an entire <coughs> act, if they like, that just comes before a committee. So I just want to put that on the record and maybe we could consider, or some other committee, maybe my colleague Mr Simpson here might have a wee think about that in the future. 
and I'm content with this regulation order. Noted. Thank you to Andy Whiteman. Um, Okay, I think just for the record, um, can just invite the committee to agree that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to this instrument. I think the points that have been stated for the record will be picked up by, by officials, I'm sure. We're all agreed? Yes. Excellent. Okay, that takes us on to agenda item four, which is public petitions PE1539 um, by Anne Booth on housing associations to come under the Freedom of Information Act, Scotland, 2002. Um, so the committee will consider the petition in the name of Anne Booth and that would call on the Scottish Government to make an order under Section 5 of the Freedom of Information Act, Scotland, 2002 to make all housing associations subject to the provisions of that Act. The committee previously considered this petition last year and determined that it would consider the petition again once the Scottish Government had responded to the consultation on extending FOIs to RSLs. The Scottish Government announced in December last year that it intends to proceed with proposals to extend FOI to RSLs and is now consulting on the terms of draft order to bring this into effect. The consultation is due to run until March 2018, um, not 17, according to my notes, um, March 2018, it is likely to be this committee which will consider the order which will be subject to the affirmative procedure. Can I invite comments from the committee? Andy White. So this petition was lodged on the 17th of October 2014, so we're three, over three years into this process. Uh, so I commend the petitioner um, for her diligence um, and it seems that this is kind of ping-ponged around committees and the government um, and the regulator it seems to me that what's being asked of this petition is to call on the Scottish Parliament to urge the Scottish Government to make an order under section 5 of the Freedom of Information Act 20 uh, to, to 2002 uh, in relationship to freedom of information and housing associations it appears to me that um, the government has now as you mentioned, has issued a consultation um, on bringing forward such an order, and therefore there's no need anymore for uh, this committee or the parliament to, to urge the government to make that order. Obviously, they still have to make that order, but it's subject to consultation, and as we understand, it'll be being brought forward, and therefore I don't see any reason to keep this petition open any further. Thank you to Andy Whiteman. Any further comments to make? Uh, so I'll just uh, uh, agree with Andy Whiteman. I think the petitioner can be uh, satisfied that despite the length of time it's taken that they've uh, actually achieved what they set out to do and the government will, well, has responded. Um, we'll deal with that order when it comes before us. So I think uh, I'd agree that we should close the petition. Okay, we're all we're all agreed on that. Um, again, I echo the comments that have been made, uh, particularly the, the tributes to, to Anne Booth, who has been uh, very patient and, and diligent. Um, well, that leads me to close the petition. Um, the committee can invite the petitioner to provide written evidence on the draft order once laid to inform the committee's scrutiny, so I'm sure we would welcome that. Are there any other actions that, that members would suggest on that? No, okay. Um, so at this point, um, I move the session into private session and I'll give the members of the public a, a couple of minutes to, to gather their things. Thank you.